Hey guys, we're at Rush and I were tech this morning, and we were having some fun, having a good day today. A little better than yesterday, huh? Got a haircut. <laughs> yes, got a haircut. You can quit giving me a hard time. But I got Jesse here, and I'm going to use him as an example because he did something really cool this morning. And one of the hardest, hardest things to teach for any of us, I don't care if it's nursing and it's trying to figure out that, you know, that point of getting that needle in, uh, I don't care if it's... Uh, you know any kind of mechanical program it's almost impossible to teach feel right how many out there stripped a bolt before oh, yeah. or broken yeah. something or you know jack something up that is almost the I don't want to say it's the only way to learn but it's really the way most of us learn is that oh okay that was too far so next time we got a problem so here's the story and I'm gonna use him in a second to duplicate the great feel that he had it was a very confident feel this was one of my my internet customers that shipped me this carb and and uh, got it cleaned up was going back together and we were putting in what's called the pilot jet or I was I should say and as I put this jet in something just didn't feel right like it was like Duh, you know that just doesn't feel right well where do you get that feel from we said experience experience how many carburetors do you think I've cleaned in 20 some years a lot uh, a couple of them okay but I want to I want to pass on the way that I look at problems okay so I put that in and I went no nah, I don't look at it. so of course you know I pulled it out stared at it put it under a magnifying glass but then let me sneak in here for a second then I went to the parts fish right you know, because I started using resources, I should say, before the parts fish, I have the pages out of the manual to see, well, what size jet should it be? Here's the actual service manual, uh, well, both these pages are. Uh, even looked aftermarket to see what recommendations. Doing all this research, I went back to the good old microfish, and this is where I got into a little concern. You could see here, this, this jet right here is the pilot jet. Look at how it does not be, it doesn't look to be the correct one. So this is that example where as soon as I saw this, as soon as I saw that, I went, oh, yep, yeah, no, my problem, that's it. You're some dummy, put the wrong jet in there. I kind of went down that road, right? And so then I went to the, the Kawasaki dealer because I was like, I'm going to go ahead and order just a brand new OEM jet because even the one that was in there, was aftermarket. I'm going to show how I can tell here in a second. But just to kind of give you guys a little refresher, we're finishing up fuel systems here. Come here and look at an, uh, an aftermarket catalog like this one. I have your uh, Tucker Rocky. There's that many different kinds of pilot jets just in this one catalog, right? We need something like this for this style key and carburetor. The microfish is showing a picture of this. What's that tell you about microfishes? What do you have to know when you're using a microfish as a photo reference? <clears throat> sometimes off. Thank you, Jesse. Sometimes wrong, right? So we went to the dealer, and I want to give Greg over at Champion Cycle um, a shout out. Uh, here's the thing: you got to know who you're who you're dealing with, even at a dealership level. We've got a, a former student, uh, Kyle, that's working over there. Hey guys. Um, both guys do great work and Greg was a mentor of mine when I was younger. Greg was a guy that was really inspirational and I got thinking, huh, Kawasaki, dirt bike, who's done more of these than I could ever even imagine? He's a Pikes Peak champion, by the way. So when we walked in to see Greg over there, we said, well, how many, you know, of these carburetors has he probably done? And right away, Greg, do you guys remember that? Greg looked at that jet and he said, well, no, I think that's the right one. And we were showing him, no, 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 here's the proof, you know. No, I think that's the right one. But we didn't have one to take apart or to look at or whatnot. What I also liked about Greg is as a craftsman, it was a deal where he was like, you know, I agree with you, Shane. Let's just order a brand new one, and then we'll see what it feels like. So these guys, the students got to see this. I wish we would have had the camera growing. But Greg, who's what another you know, 10, 20 years on me for experience, what did he say when he tried that? Feels weird. Did you look at his face? Us mechanics, just if you haven't seen this before, when something's going wrong, we kind of look like we're constipated or something. Oh, that ain't right, right? <laughs> something's goofy. So he said, hey, I agree with you, something feels weird. So uh, with that being said, take a look. We've got one OEM jet here and one aftermarket, and they just look identical. Can you, can you get in there any closer maybe? 
it's not really doing that great a job, is it? Okay. I think the, the people are going to get the idea they look really close. Well, the factory one, though, a factory jet, you're just not going to be able to see it in the camera. It's going to have, because this is a Kian carburetor. So Kian's really cool about their jets will have that little K logo on there showing that this is a factory jet. So right away when I saw that this was an aftermarket one, I don't know if this is a quality aftermarket one. There's no label. There's no anything. Do you see what a good idea it is just to get a new one? So let's go ahead and model this, mix these up here, whatnot, you know, okay? I'm going to know which one. Jesse's not going to know. We're going to go off feel. Now, really, he's at an unfair advantage now because we need to know he's got to try the two of them to kind of see what's going on with that. I like that one. Definitely feels a lot better than the last one. Okay. So you can see the difference there and kind of watch the body language and see what that's like as far as what's going on. So that was the point that we wanted to make with this video. Here at the college, and I'm sure we got a lot of our techs that are watching this, you know, that are uh, thinking about coming to the college or whatnot. We try so hard to practice that feel. One of our favorite machines here, you guys probably have seen this from the videos. We've got a whole series on uh, torque testing where we can, you know, cover this up and actually test our feel on that. But man, I'll tell you, that is one of the hardest things to teach. I don't care what your trade is. So ultimately, what would we really say? about gaining the feel. What do you got to do? Practice. Practice over and over and over and be relentless. Keegan here today, he's got to drill out a broken bolt. Doesn't somebody else have one? Yeah. You've got one to drill out. Those are ones that technicians typically look at and you go, oh God, man, I got to drill a bolt out. You guys are like, man, let's get this. Let's get after it. Let's practice it. This is a good place in the lab to really get that experience. But uh, good job on the feel. Uh, we'd be excited to get this back to the customer. We've had a big delay on this just because of the fact that it, it just there's no way it could ship it out the door going, eh, it'll probably be all right. And the reality of it is it probably would have been all right, but I think for you guys getting that experience to see how different that felt. And so Greg yesterday uh, to a champion, so he put the new one in and you could just watch it too. It was cool and he's just like, yep, it was just way smoother and went and it's what you do. So learn from others, find mentors, Make it a great day. Share uh, this video uh, to support the program here. And uh, as always, keep wrenching.